All right, shalom and welcome back to the channel, you guys. I am Jonathan, the Code Searcher, and we're going to talk, uh, or we're going to try to talk, because I've tried to do this video three times already, and the internet has dropped out. And so, take number four. All right. Every time that happens, I know there's a reason why. So I look further in the table and every time I find something new. But I also found another clip that I want to share with you because I only had one in the uh, the other videos that I did. Now I've got another one that plays right along this. But before we get into it, you guys, I want to talk about the thumbnail in the last video. Biden resigns. If you saw that, it had a picture of him with two black women behind him. Now, I didn't choose that thumbnail. AI chose that for me because of the title of my video. So that was very interesting to me because it does seem like there is a possibility, you guys, that if Biden resigns, Kamala is the one they put in because that's the natural order to this. Who is she going to pick? And it has to be somebody that is a juggernaut, somebody that is a champion because she can't carry the vote alone, you guys. And they can't fake it. All right. I do believe there will be shenanigans. But if if we can and Bernie's can't make it all the way to the election and you know what I mean, they're they're literally holding him up. Then what's the other option? There's only a couple of ways we can go with this. Right. Donald Trump has got a huge mountain to to overcome as far as the democratic party because they've had four years to do things right and uh it's it's not going to be so easy i mean i'm looking at the latest polls and they've got him neck and neck with joe biden and we all know that's a bunch of mm, right 47 to 49 percent i'm not buying that <laughs> but they want you to believe that they want you to believe that because of what um, they have in store for us. You guys, um, I hate to say that. I I really hope that this doesn't happen. But again, these these codes are about probabilities. And yes, I do believe that uh, got a mosquito flying in front of me. I do believe that prayer helps. You know, these these things can be averted. Michael Drazen believed that. Um, that was one point that I did agree with him on that. This is not all set in stone. People have choices there. There there's times where the father intervenes, right? Um, look at what happened with Nineveh. Nineveh was set for destruction. The father sent a prophet and, and, and told him to repent. They did. He relented, right? So it can be averted. These things can be averted, but it's going to take you. You can't just sit on your, your dairy air. And let the next guy worry about this. We're all in this together. This is all of our problem. Okay. So we collectively got to be crying out to the father. Remember the other table, right? Rent your hearts and not your garments, right? He's merciful to forgive. Let's, let's consider that when, when we're talking about this, if we do not, the alternative is pretty bleak, you guys. And so we're going to be talking about that a little bit. And it's not that I'm trying to be, you know, um, doom and gloomer. Uh, I, I don't want it to see. I don't want to see it go down this way. I do know that if if Trump somehow, by the grace of the Father and, and intervention from him, makes it in there. His anointed that there's still a high probability they're going to try to do something to him. They may even try before the election, you guys. They really do not want him and his policies back in the office because it completely over overrides what they're trying to do. I mean, we can all see that they're trying to run this country into the ground. So let's look at that um, thumbnail real quick. You guys, so, so you kind of got an idea of what I'm talking about. Some of you may not even noticed right but the thumbnail i'm talking about that the computer generated gave me is is this with with the two standing behind right um what's that all about i'm kind of interested to see what the thumbnail will be when i upload this video so pay attention to that when when you guys come across this make sure you look at the thumbnail because the computer ai is going to pick that and it's going to be about Kamala as president. So 
who does a who does computer pick? Uh, maybe it knows because of videos that are already out on the internet. Look what I found that came out just two days before I did my video, and I had no idea. I didn't see it until after the fact, and then it was like, oh wow. Remember Biden standing there with the two ladies? Okay. Let's watch this together. Small clip, just a couple of minutes. Now to the U.S. presidential election. We know who the Republicans want, Donald Trump. But on the Democratic side, the choice is even simpler. You have a sitting U.S. president. Joe Biden is the incumbent. He has virtually no challengers. He's breezing through the primaries. In fact, he's just won the Michigan primary. But there is one problem. Joe Biden is 81 years old. He's overseen two wars. His approval ratings are at an all-time low. And even though he may not have any competition, it's not like he's popular. Take Michigan, for example. Biden won there, but it wasn't a clean sweep. More than 100,000 people voted uncommitted. One lakh people said they were uncommitted, meaning they're not too sure about Biden. But do you know who they're sure about? Michelle Obama, the former first lady of the United States. The Democrats apparently love her, and a latest poll proved just that. Democrats were asked about who could replace Biden. 20% chose Michelle Obama, 15% chose Kamala Harris, and 12% believe it should be Hillary I just want to go back to this previous, Primaries. just this previous picture, you guys. Look how she's standing behind Biden there, just like in the thumbnail, okay? So... So that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. Joe Biden is 81 years old. He's overseen two wars. His approval ratings are at an all-time low. And even though he may not have any competition, it's not like he's popular. Take Michigan, for example. Biden won there, but it wasn't a clean sweep. More than 100,000 people voted uncommitted. One lakh people said they were uncommitted, meaning they're not too sure about Biden. But do you know who they're sure about? Michelle Obama, the former first lady of the United States. The Democrats apparently love her, and a latest poll proved just that. Democrats were asked about who could replace Biden. 20% chose Michelle Obama, 15% chose Kamala Harris, and 12% believe it should be Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's got, got no chance in there. I don't even know why she's involved in that. But those other two, at, at a combined 35%, okay, um, this could be the dynamic duo that they put in there. And I'm just saying this is a possibility. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I am searching it out to uh, try to confirm these things. It does look very plausible, very plausible that it can't be somebody like Newsom that won't work. It won't work. Obama, the name Obama alone will pull in just about all of the black vote, you guys. Just about all of them, because it's like Obama, well, at that point, it will be 4.0, 5.0, right? Because Kamala is 4.0 in this. What is going to happen? So we got Kamala as president. Biden is removed. Right. And then we've got the Donald Trump table that, that implies there's going to be an attempt on his life. All right. So we're going to look at how all these play out as, as we get closer to the election. I think you might see some some shenanigans take place. And I'm going to use that word instead of some of the others, because, um, <laughs> you know, I don't want to put out misinformation. Of course, this is all my my analysis of what we're seeing here. And then if any of this happens, we'll come back and talk about it in hindsight. All right. So um, let's continue. I got one more after this before we get into the video. So the Democrats want a shake up. But their popular choice is not someone in the system. It's an outsider. In this case, Michelle Obama. The question then is, why does America love her? And can she shake up the Democratic ballot? Michelle Obama has always been popular. She came into the limelight in 2008. That's when her husband, Barack Obama, started campaigning. The couple was loved on the campaign trail. 
Once Obama became president, the appeal only grew. Their stint in the White House was quite popular, and Michelle wasn't just any other first lady. She did not live in the shadows of her husband. She held her own. Perhaps. All right, you guys, I'm going to link it, uh, link this down in the bottom. You can watch the full thing. I want to move on to the next one so we can get into the code that I got for you. Um, one moment here. This is a really good one from, from Victor Davis Hansen. Please be sure to go over and um, subscribe to him. Uh, but he put together a really good piece here. I thought was really uh, something noteworthy here. Left as he wanted to, he was too timid. And he felt that he wasn't yet ready. He would hurt his legacy if he didn't get reelected or what, it was too dangerous. So now, with Joe Biden, he's living his dream. Remember what he said, he's on tape. My dream is to phone in the presidency. I would like to be, have a third term, but not if I had to work. I would just like to sit in my basement and no, but, and just tell people what's gonna do. And that, he said it, and that's what he's doing right now. The, the Obamas are running the country. When my point is they want Joe Biden the way he is because he's a construct. He's just a cardboard person they cut out and they plopped him down in the basement and they make him move once in a while. And then they run all of the agencies. Obama's responsible for the border. He's responsible for the whole crime epidemic. This is what he wanted. And Biden was very useful. People would ask me, knowing what you know now, do you wish like you had a, sec a, a third term? Um, and I, I used to say, you know what, if, if I could make an arrangement where um, I had, a, I had a, a stand in, a front man or front woman, and, and they had an earpiece in, and I was just in my basement in my sweats mm -hmm. looking through the stuff, and then I could sort of deliver the lines, but somebody else was uh, doing all the talking and ceremony, wow. I, I'd be fine with that. Barack Obama, name it, just name it. We came into that presidency with people on both sides of the political aisle that were really working hard to put race behind us and make it incidental to who we are. And all during that campaign, he black, take a gun to a knife fight, get in their faces. My grandmother was scared of black men, threw her under the bus. Michelle, they raised the bar on me. Never been proud. Damn right me. I got so sick of it. He ran about, oh, I'm to the right of Hillary. As soon as he got in there, it was socialist medical, med care, you know, medical Obamacare, which I think the medical system was never recovered from. And then he remanufactured the entire Middle East and was the most anti-Israeli president we've ever had. He alienated a lot of the Sunni monarchies. And then he promoted Iran, 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 and the Shia circle and triangle, whatever it is, Hezbollah, Hamas, Lebanon, Syria. We had the bombing of Libya where the Qaddafi epigon is that the children were going to gradually re restructure Libya. They probably would have lost power eventually, but it was a the idea you're going to go in there and bomb and just destroy that country is then we had the Syrian red line. Remember that brought the Soviets back into the Middle East for the first time in 40 years. And by the way, they're still there. And then we had the hot mic where basically that was the green light that got Putin into Ukraine when he said, give me space, Vladimir tell Vladimir to give me space. I'll, I'll be flexible in missile defense. My last election, Putin gave him space. We dismantled missile defense, which would be very valuable right now in Eastern. And Poles would have been very happy to have it. And then he went into uh, Crimea and the Donbass, et cetera. That was his foreign policy. We had the whole Trayvon would have looked like the child I never had. You name it. It was just in your face and in your face. And suddenly everybody started to recalibrate their tribal affinities. And then this completely nefarious debunked charlatan, but a sinister one, not just a nonchalant charlatan. Al Sharpton was rehabilitated and what was in the White House every week, this Freddy, Freddy's Market, uh, Crown Heights racist, you you know, tell them Jews to come over here and their Yarmouk. We blacks were doing this when 
you homos. It was homophobic, it was racist, it was anti-Semitic, and all of a sudden he's central point man for Obama. Go on and on and on. The one thing about Obama people don't realize is that yes, Obama won twice, and yes, he raised record amounts of money, and yes, he ran brilliant campaigns. But over his tenure, he lost 1,400. 1400 state and local offices to republicans right. and he, he came in with a super majority in the senate and the house and when he left he had lost the house and the senate and the presidency that's hard to do in a country that's controlled by leftist institutions he was sitting in the meeting when john brennan laid out the whole fbi operation crossfire hurricane and he heard what hillary clinton was doing he knew all about his department of justice attorney general meeting with bill clinton during the whole hillary thing you name it this goes all the way back to tony resco and what his chicago career and now he has the gumption to come out every once in a while and lecture us on racial relations and stereotyping when he has what not the chicago beautiful home not the calorama mansion not the 40 acre Martha's Vineyard mansion, but the Hawaii mansion. And this he's, and he lectures us on white supremacy, white privilege, et cetera. Remember he hijacked the John Lewis funeral and started giving us rants about Puerto Rico and the filibuster being a racist idea. I could not believe that. Here you are at a funeral and he's supposed to be giving a eulogy and he starts ranting about giving, getting rid of the Jim Crow area of relic era filibuster at a funeral and i'm yeah. thinking wait a minute who filibustered sam alito wasn't it you right. wasn't it you you tried to stop his nomination by doing what filibustering and you know it changed the democratic party it they had a party of bill clinton i know bill clinton was corrupt i know he was mm -hmm untrustworthy but he was a realist and a pragmatist and he and newt Genrich gave us four years of balanced budget i know taxes were too high i know all that but we were not borrowing trillions of dollars you could work nancy pelosi hillary clinton bill clinton and two, 1992 and 1996 democratic conventions they gave speeches about open borders as a bad thing and legal only immigration. That was the Democratic Party. You could at least work with it. It wasn't a Jacobin party. He did that. Obama did that. So as you can see there, um, Obama is never really left office, you guys. He's been calling the shots from his basement with Biden and Obama 3.0. And I believe the plan is to either weaken at Bernie's with Biden or hand it off to Kamala. And Kamala picks a juggernaut. It has to be a juggernaut to beat or even appear to beat because I don't believe anybody can really be trump and, and the numbers and america's sick of this policy and these policies so it has to appear legitimate when they do the thing right so let's go over now to the table that i got for you which is kamala as president and i'm on two computers so i gotta remember what i'm doing here all right kamala as president is the uh the access term here. And and let me just say, this is the point at which I was recording. And uh, the computer, the, the Wi-Fi went out. So, so take number four for... Um, Kamala as president. Here's the access term right here, running vertical this way, Kamala as president. It is as a, at a skip of 2539, which that means the cylinder, uh, the, the measurement of the cylinder that this is going around. Abaddon caps that, you guys, which is really peculiar. Look how Abaddon sits right, right where that olive is in Nasi, president. 
which is very similar to the angle that you see with Obama here. Obama right here, Abaddon right here, and, it, and it's just one number difference. That's why the, you see the canter is different there. That's really interesting. Um, we also have the United States that runs up across in the blue here. And on that bet right there is a 90 degree angle. It's the same word for the United, St uh, the United States. The hay in the United States, in brown here, running down is the eclipse. So there is an eclipse that's very significant um, to this time period. And also the blood moon that runs this way. If you guys recall in the last video, I talked about, you know, there's not only an eclipse April 8th, but there is a couple of lunar eclipse, which will be a blood moon. And this is around March 24th, 25th, something like that. It will be a blood moon over the United States. And many people will be able to see that. Um, up, up at the top, we have a time of distress. A time of distress in the yellow. And also, if we if we turn this cylinder just a little bit, we're going to go this other direction here. So we can see the abortions. Right here, the abortions in the other direction. So time of distress and the abortions come together like that. Same word is here, the abortions. This is one of the grievous sins of this nation. You guys and I've talked about that a lot on this channel. We also have the name Obama down here. And we do have war that is in this table three times, which has been a re recurring pattern in a lot of these tables, indicating, I believe, World War III or the chance of World War III, right? And I think with her as president... <laughs> Even if there is a Vice President Obama in this, I think it will be the greatest ever time to be attacked, uh, to see an invasion in this country. If you are watching and, and, and are aware of what's going on, I recommend the channels like Redacted and even, um, you know, Alex Jones is doing a pretty good job right now covering some of these things. Um, things are not good with China and Russia right now. And um, the fact that we are instigating this war in um, Ukraine, we're supplying missiles and um, all kinds of equipment. Uh, I think that's going to come back and harm us, you guys. I think it's going to come back in in a bad way that we've done this, uh, especially if we give them missiles that are long range that can strike inside of Russia. Um, I think it's a bad thing. Uh, I won't say anything further in that. Um, one of these ver uh, places where war is right here, we have an, a, a vertical anomaly, um, and it stops with that rash right there. I don't know why I don't have that highlighted, but it, it's asking a question: Who will shoot? Who will shoot war? And we have the name Biden in the orange. We also have Biden vertical here, and back down where Blood Moon is, we also had the last name Harris and the pink that runs this way. Okay, we also have two years, 2023 and 2024 are both in this table. So 2023 would run down this way, stopping at that bet here. And 2024 is this way in the uh, purple letters there. Um, we also have the word uh, for rapture in the white. That goes across, hinging on that hay in this vertical anomaly, which is kind of peculiar. I don't know what it really means. It it simply says the cleaner will be imported. The cleaner is imported with, with Obama's, the hay in Obama stopping right there in the same column. That's pretty interesting to me. Um, that's got to be a significant anomaly. What it means, we'll only know in hindsight, right? Uh, let's see. I think that's all of the ELS terms, you guys. I want to, okay, we got one more, OTOT. OTOT in the yellow that runs through these verses, stopping here, it's here twice. There it is once there. Here it is again, OTOT. This way, which um, means letters, but it also can mean signals or signs. Okay, and I think in this context, that's what this is. Also, in the plain text right here, we have a destroying lion right under the uh, Obama anomaly here and also intersecting with the 
eclipse. We have a destroying lion. All right, so now let's let's uh, segue into the actual verses in this, and we'll go from there. All right, if you if you've noticed these um, highlighted verses here and these fragments of verses, this is Isaiah, and then we get into Jeremiah. So we got Isaiah and Jeremiah at the top of um, Kamala as president, but also right underneath, um, a cleaner will be imported. So let's go to the first one that I have for you and uh, read that. I want to thank the new subscribers that have joined us. Uh, may y'all bless you. I appreciate you. And um, please share and like the videos. One moment. Chapter 8, verse 9. Let's go back to that. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken to pieces, and, and give ear, all ye of far off countries. Gird yourself, and ye shall be broken to pieces. Gird yourself, and ye shall be broken to pieces. Three times, right? Then it says that. Interesting fact is the that we go from eight, I believe uh, the next line down is chapter 15. No, it's chapter 30. And then uh, it's a little further down. You'll see a pattern um, emerging here with this, with these words that the prophet use, uses. One moment. All right. Again, and he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's remnant. I will break it into pieces, break it into pieces, shatter. Like you, like you take a, 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 a vessel, you know, like a clay pot or something, and you shatter it on the ground. I will break into pieces as the breaking of potter's vessels that is broken into pieces, and he shall not spare so that there shall not be any found in the bursting of the sherd to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit. It will be good for nothing. For thus saith the Adonai Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved, in quietness and confidence shall, your, shall be your strength, and ye would not. But ye said, no, for we will flee upon horses, and we therefore ye shall flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they pursue you to be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and the rebuke of five shall flee. Till ye be left as a beacon upon a top of a mountain, as an ensign on a hill, and therefore will Yah awake. And that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Adonai Elohim is an Elohim of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait upon him. We're going to go down to the next one for the sake of time. You guys, we're at the chapter 48 in Isaiah. And this is what he says. Let's go to verse 9. Start there. For my name's sake will I defer my anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I will not cut thee off. Uh, I will cut thee not off. Before I have refined thee, but not with silver, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction for my own sake, and for mine own sake, and even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should I how should for how should my name be polluted? And I will not give glory to another. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my call. I am he, I am the first, and I am also the last. And mine hand shall be laid, hath laid the foundation of the earth. And my right hand hath spanned the heavens. And when I call unto them, they stand up together. So he's the only one that controls these stars and, and these signs that we see, you guys. He's the one that 
is in control of everything. Right, let's go down to the next one. Okay, this is uh, Jeremiah also here. Different color, but this is where the destroying lion is. Um, chapter 2. But where are thy gods that thou hast made? Let them arise, if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. Wherefore will I plead? Wherefore will ye plead with me? Ye have all transgressed, transgressed against me, saith Yah. And in vain I have smitten your children. They receive no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. And then we go down again to the next line. Also, Jeremiah, behold, the days come is highlighted there. This is chapter 16 of, of Jeremiah. I'm going to back up to 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yah, that it shall be uh, no more said that Yah liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yah liveth that brought the children of of Israel out of the land of the north. And, and many of you looking for rapture or the second exodus, this is your verse right here where he gathers the, those children. And, and by the way, Israel is not the state of Israel. The context there. Israel is still in the spore, you guys. And we're talking about an exponential number. And from the lands where I have driven them, I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Now, many Christians believe that they're already there. Well, the Jews are, but what about the other tribes? The exponential growth of 7.2 million Israelis at 2,730 years are in the hundreds of billions of people. Where are all those people at? Where are they? They are in the nations, the goyim. They are the goyim in the nations, you guys. It's called the identity crisis, and a lot of Christians don't understand this concept. Let's go down to one more verse right here in Jeremiah, chapter 30. Really interesting because at the head of this table in the yellow, we do have in a, a time of distress. Here we do have a second witness. For thus speaketh the Elohim, excuse me, the Adonai Elohim of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith Yah, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah. See how he specifies two right there. Israel is one, uh, is Judah is one, Israel is ten, right? Judah is also Levi and Benjamin, saith the Adonai. I will cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that Adonai spoke unto them, uh, spoke unto Israel, and concerning Judah, for thus saith uh, Yah, we have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man do travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in travail, and all the faces are turning to paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that there's none like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. All right, so there we go. But he shall be saved out of it. We got another witness in the timing of where we are in all of these things. Let's go on down to this next verse, which is in Micah. Next verses, Micah chapter 4. Let's start with a verse 11. Now also many nations are gathered against thee. That say, let her be defiled, and let our eye look upon Zion. But they know not the thoughts of the Adonai, neither understand his uh, they his counsel, for he shall gather them as sheaves unto the floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass, and thou shalt beat into pieces again with the the pieces. Right? Many people. And incidentally, I'm reminded of when Yah split the, the kingdom of Israel. What did he do with the prophet? 
He took a garment and he tore it into pieces and he, he split them all up. And he said, this is what I'm going to do to the nation. I'm going to tear it into pieces. Here we see the same thing. Could that be happening in the United States? Are we going to see such division that we're torn into pieces? You guys, if we see what could potentially happen with this, with Kamala taking place, uh, taking presidency and whoever she chooses, I believe it's going to be Michelle Obama. Las Vegas believes with the bookings that she's the, the biggest contender. It's very probable. If we see that, it's not going to be good for this nation. I, and I don't want to go any further in that in, in the provocation to Russia and China. But if we have these two women in, we can almost guarantee an invasion from another country. If for nothing else but to intervene and save the American people from the corrupt uh, government that, that we have. I mean, it's logical. It's probable. We've done that to other nations. So wouldn't it be you know, something that is plausible for, you know, the other nations that are watching this this nation that's only 248 years old. Did you know that Russia is over a thousand years old and China more than 4,000? What do you think they, when they see this little brat on the, on the corner who's only 240 years old, calling the shots, doing all these things all around the world, calling it peacemaking and whatever. They see it as out of control. Somebody's going to come and correct us at some point, you guys. And I'm just being frank with you. Some can't imagine the fact that America could be occupied by blue helmets or Chinese troops or Russian troops. You can't even fathom that. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. It's very possible. It's very possible. We don't see America in prophecy coming to save the day at the end. It's not there. Where is America? I think it will be the, the example to the rest of the world when judgment falls. Let's continue, you guys, on down. This... uh. This next verse or verses, it's a verse right under Kamala's name, which is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 17. I said in my heart, Elohim shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time and there is for every purpose and for every work. So he has a purpose for whatever we see happen. There is a purpose for it. He has a purpose in what he's doing. And what is this? From Daniel. Down at the bottom there. Daniel chapter 10. Verse 18. Okay, so this is the end of da Daniel where he's praying for... Um, the, and supplicating and an angel has to come and and uh, revive him because what if he what he's seeing at the end time so let's back up just to get context we start about verse six and his body was like burl and his face was appearance of lightning and his eyes was lamps of fire and his arms and his feet were like the color of a polished brass and a voice of his words were like the mul was the voice of a multitude and i daniel alone saw the vision for the men that were uh, with me saw not the vision but the great quake fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves therefore i was left alone and i saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me for my comeliness was turned uh, in in me into corruption and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the word, the voice of his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me. And he set me up on my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, 
a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright for thee, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. And he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy Elohim, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the king of Persia, which stood me one and twenty days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remain there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make thee understand what will befall thy people in the latter days, that's now, for the vision is for many days. And that's what I got for you guys in the Kamala as president table. Again, I'm not saying this is going to happen. It's very probable. There's only a couple of ways the Democrats can go. And we're going to see it all unfold. And we'll come back to whatever table it is. And we'll look at it a little deeper. So until then, shalom to you. Thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and share this video. Shalom to you. We'll see you in the next video.